Hello guys, welcome. My name is Mario from the Ivana Pizza Oven community and today we are doing a review of the Ivana breathing containers. So we are showing two examples of what uh, we can do with them, which is basically using as a topping container to store all our ingredients in for making pizzas. So we've got some cheese, some tomatoes and some sauce. And also their main use of proving dough inside uh, the container. So this dough is the Ovana uh, Neapolitan pizza dough recipe and it has been cold fermenting for about 24 hours as a bowl. So slightly different to what normally uh, the recipe states, but a different way to enhance your dough um, using that cold fermented method. So what I did was basically pull it up and then squirt a little bit of olive oil in the bottom of the, the bowl, uh, as well as a little bit on top of the lid. Put it uh, into the container and then let it sit in the fridge for 24 hours. And now that we're, we're ready to use it, I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of fine semolina just over the top. And then using a thin spatula going around the outside of the bowl, just to separate the sides so that way it doesn't, um, uh, doesn't stick as it's coming out. And then we're going to go straight into a container of fine semolina and we just give it a bit of a squeeze. And as we can see, that pops straight out very easily. So good thing about that is we're not um, pulling and stretching it as we're removing it. Um, so it maintains its round shape. We're going to then dust this bowl, make sure it's all nice and covered. And give it a bit of a flip. Just so all that stickiness is off there, make sure it's all covered all the way around. And then on our surface, another little sprinkle. Just flattening that out, making that nice and round again. So we can see, and then we're just pushing from the center, straight to the crust, and moving, working our way around to flatten the center, but form that, uh, that puffy crust around the perimeter. Give it a bit of a flip, we'll do the same thing. And what we want to do is maintain a nice even thickness of the base. Uh, that way there's no thick and thin spots because when we're placing that pizza onto the peel, we don't want to tear those thin spots. And also when we're launching it into the oven, we don't want those thin spots to tear as we're turning the pizza. So very important to make sure that we're maintaining an even thickness on the base. And once we form this, this crust, we no longer want to touch it. We don't want to push any of that air out of it because that's what gives us that, that puff uh, when it goes into the oven. So once we get to this stage, you can see it's a little bit, uh, a little bit smaller. Um, so we'll just give it a bit of a stretch. So this method, um, they call it the stretch and slap method. Um, it's essentially just placing one hand in the center and gently pull to one side, flip it onto our hand and flip it back over. So as we, as we do that, the pizza is uh, spinning around, rotating. And at the same time, it's stretching to that nice, nice thickness that we want. And um, that looks like that's about, about right. So we'll get, get some sauce on here. A couple of dobs in the center. And then just working that around in a circular motion all the way to the, uh, just before we get to the crust. Because we don't want anything spilling over the crust because that can then create extra liquid on top of our peel, as well as into our oven, which can cause that to burn um, and also make our pizza stick as well. So we wanna make sure we're keeping inside our crust. So once we've got that, we'll go in with a bit of Parmesan cheese. And then we will get our fresh mozzarella. And it's important that we drain, drain our mozzarella when it's fresh, because there's a lot of liquid on there. And we don't want to have liquid on top of our pizza because when we're cooking, it then will create a lot more moisture and that can make a sloppy, sloppy base as well as tearing and making a mess in our oven. So always want to keep everything as dry as possible and everything to a, a minimum. We don't want to be overloading these, the, the pizza um, because number one, it gives an uneven cook. So the top will take a lot longer to cook than the bottom. So you have the bottom overcooked, the top undercooked and it just is a uneven balance. Everything about this style of pizza is balance and, and simplicity. We'll also put a, a couple cherry tomatoes on here just for something different. Squirt of olive oil. And a pinch of salt. So now with 
we want to get it into our oven. We want to lightly flour our launching pill with some fine semolina. And then what we want to do is basically lift the silver crust and in one motion we're pushing the peel under the pizza and pulling the pizza towards the peel. So straight under like that. And then we're going to just go underneath and get that back to a round shape. And as you can see, it's moving and the perforated holes in the peel are designed to allow that extra fine semolina to drop from the bottom of the pizza. That way it doesn't cook and burn in the oven and give you that bitter taste of that burnt semolina. So definitely a good feature. All right, we've had our oven preheating for about 20 minutes now. We'll just check on the temperature and make sure that we've got the correct temperature we want to achieve on the stone. It's reading about 410 degrees, which is optimal for, for cooking. So we're using a high flame, over 400 on the stone, and we're good to go. So we're going to go straight in the oven in one motion. Just like that. And now without turning it on, what we're going to do is wait, and we're looking for that uh, puff on the side closest to the flame. And then once that starts happening, we'll start to turn. And what we're trying to achieve is just even cook all the way around the outside making sure that the colour is, uh, is the same and the rise is the same as well. So I'm going to go straight underneath on the left side. We're going to lift it up and rotate it towards the opposite side of the oven. This makes it easy for us to turn the pizza around without having to pull the, um, the pizza around to then spin it and put it back in again. Maintaining that, uh, that heat, um, the whole cooking process, opposed to pulling it out and then losing that temperature. Continuing to do that, roughly every 10 to 15 seconds, and just judging by the colour around the outside. And there we have it. Now we're going to put this straight onto a cooling rack, just to let all that steam dissipate, because we don't want to counteract what we've just done in the oven, which is basically high cooking temperature to achieve a crispy base. All that moisture that's coming off, if that gets left on a flat surface, it's going to go through your base and it's going to create a soggy base. So we have our serving board. We'll get our pizza and slide it onto the top. Garnish with a little bit of basil. That classic margarita look. A touch more olive oil just around the crust. A little bit more salt. And we're good to cut. As you can see, we've got a nice puffy crust, nice solid base that's nice and crispy and all around good looking pizza. Highly recommend these containers because it will take your dough to the next level. Also enhancing your organization for your pizza prepping. Because at the end of the day, for a successful cook, you want to make sure that you're prepped and organized to make sure that you're as efficient as possible. Because the longer you take preparing pizza, the harder it's going to be when it comes to launching that pizza in the oven. So there we have it. I hope you enjoyed, I hope you learned something and you give these proving containers a go. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to join our Facebook community, which is the Urbana Pizza Oven Community. We share more tips and tricks like this with experiences from other members in the community and we would love for you to be a part of that. We also have a YouTube channel called Mix and Puff and we release all these videos first on that channel um, along with other new videos. So we would love for you to subscribe to our channel as well. Well, that wraps it up until next time. Thank you guys, and we love to see you soon.